welcome, welcome, welcome to PC Gamer Radio, and today we are looking at our final thoughts on Per Asper, this incredible city builder, planet size builder where you're terraforming Mars. Oh my god, this game is so good! So let's jump into the game, I'll tell you all about it. Now, Per Asper is an incredible game from 2020. So, so good. Let's start a new game and I'll tell you all about why it's so good. Now, I'm going to win the sandbox. No, I'm going to start the campaign because you kind of need to see how it works. Now, difficulty lessons, difficulty level. I'd stick as normal because if I'm looking at spare mode, limited resources, yeah, higher construction, oh, structural, oh my goodness. If I go back and play the game, I'll probably go Aspera because I know how things work. So um, let's just stick on normal for the the actual thing. Now, per Asper, you're basically terraforming Mars, and um, the, the AI bots down on the planet. Now, it has a fantastic campaign. Great storylines. Troy Baker as well. You'll hear his voice in the beginning. One of the leading voice artists in video gaming. The AI voice that you play is wonderful. She is fantastic. And you're in constant communication with NASA in Houston, Texas. So it's really, really good. Now, the planet itself is mapped as accurately as NASA have mapped themselves. So you're getting a really fantastic topographical map of of Mars, and if I zoom out, you can kind of see um, places where the Perseverance rover was, and other experiments that have gone on the planet, and there's lots of these all around. Now, here we go, we've got an incoming call. Let's see what this is. Amy, this is ISA Mission Control calling from Earth. Are you with us? Do you copy? Now you do have a timeout um, to answer these, but I'm just going to chat to him. Affirmative, Houston. And the view is marvelous. Oh, we are glad to hear that. Let's uh, get your initialization underway. The primary Mars module has already touched down at the designated landing zone. So it's time for you to take control of the mission. The main directives are displayed on the left edge of your display. Follow them to set up the initial base on Mars's surface. I'll give you some time to settle in. When you're ready, go ahead and initiate our terraforming mission. Houston up. Now, I've got directories on the left. It just wants me to start a mine. Now, you can build mines outside of your range here, but it, it's basically saying this is too far. That's okay, though. It does require aluminium. Like, if I found aluminium out here, I can put the mine on it. Then I would have to build the infrastructure to it. But there's obviously one nearby, so let's... Not that I will automatically try and find the best path going through the topography. And we've had an interesting place to land here that's fairly flat. You get to see a little robot here. And if I click on this, we can kind of see he's moving. The view of Mars from up here is oh. fascinating. The landscape is so cratered and desolate. Wait, the, it, what? what? I keep. I'm just going to skip this stuff because it's part of the storyline and it's nice to experience that for the first time. Um, so this needs two aluminium, two steel and the little AI bot here is, is been moving that to create the mine here. So at the minute it's all kind of robot. Now the game is essentially a city builder, but you're going to be going as large as a pole planet, which makes it fascinating. No, there should be some silicon. It is too far, but I'll put a factory right in the middle, and I want to try and maximize the, uh, the path taken. Now, if I want to build the mine first, I can turn this off to ignore it. 
because there's no infrastructure per se there, he ignores the... Uh, you can't put it, leave it there, so he has to take it all the way back to base. And you can fast forward um, if you want. I think he's going to have to uh, create this up. So I'm going to put a worker hub here. These hubs are good because they extend the amount of workers you've got. There we go, the mine is going. Now what you learn at the beginning here is kind of important to remember this path. Because you're going to need to, when you set up your base on the other side of Mars, for example, over here, you're going to have to repeat this process. Which is really, really cool. Now you will be going all across Mars, and as you get uh, Mars habit habitable to a part where humans can come here, humans are going to come and settle where you are, and you're going to be terraforming the planet by adding water will come here and all sorts of greenery, it'd be wonderful. I'm just kind of showing you the basics here. Right, we'll turn this on now. Now glass is needed for power because you're going to be creating like solar panels. Solar farms. There's a couple of ores out here. You'll notice your power is all nicely collected. Now, at the minute, the game is as basic as can possibly be. And you don't actually understand how complex the game will get. And it's beautifully done in a way not to overwhelm you. Amy, this is Houston. Excellent. I can't. My all right. The reach of the yeah, I am sorry. Yeah, the storyline is really, really cool. I really like it, and we are running at sixteen times now. <laughs> we need to get all the mines up before we can make steel. It's kind of like a complex process, but um. As you start going through, you're building all the, the basic materials here, you're going to start to, t um, first of all, start doing like radiographic tests to see where there's more resources and you're going to push your base out to these places. And um, you'll eventually, when humans come here, you will start to get research from them. And um, places like Perseverance Rover over here, um, if you stretch out to here, you can build a research place on there, and this is how to get fast research, is really getting to these places where there's lots of, like here, an abandoned robotic base, that'll pull some research from that. I mainly played the game on 8 speed, because things can take a while to set up. This is the steel factory. Uh, put him up here. Now you'll notice on the bottom all the things you've got. There's eight glass there. Um, once you get like 20 glass, you can take turn off the kiln. I'd, I'd turn off anything that you not really needed as you go forward because you know if you build a hundred glass you're just like well, what do you need all that for it's that phase and you might as well turn it off because your worker will not need to do this massive path it just needs a little bit more oh well, there you go beauty steel's very very important um throughout great this where we are the, the okay let's get the worker factory up and we're almost at fully proficient i'll stick this in the middle and it it needs two more big factories let's get them in it needs electronics factory and it needs a parts factory once these three get built i should be able to build workers and the worker hub here has given me an extra worker. If I build another one of these at maximum, we'll go to three. And on the bottom left, you can see how many workers you've got and how many hubs you've got, how much power you've got. 
the efficient coming from my home base and solar is what I've got up there. And how many structures you've got on your limit. This limit will extend bigger when you get research. And when the game starts to open up and become more climatized, the Mars will actually go from daylight to darkness. And during darkness, all your solar power is going to drop off. So you then start need to researching wind power to cover you during the night. And then you need to get like batteries. And hopefully you can build enough batteries to last the night so this is kind of important power because when it goes daylight come here and watch it go down and watch it go back up it's like um and you need to make sure it never gets to zero because as soon as power goes below a hundred percent it'll start to turn off buildings and some of the buildings it turns off are repair buildings and if repair buildings turn off it can create fires everywhere and you will have a nightmare so management is key to keeping um early z base and especially when you, you're over here building another base and you're not coming back here to see what's happening it could be like oh no things are on fire <laughs> Now, I can press this button here to get them the fastest possible, but he is going to need parts from down here, so I'll turn... Well, that needs electronics, and we'll put an X... We'll make electronics an express thing, so you'll, you'll kind of make sure that's always full. Um, you might want to put this express thing on your worker factory, so it always builds workers, because... Your workers have a finite age. Once they get so old, they will just destroy. So having your work factory on like the fastest speed can really just make sure it's always topped up. The, the factory is getting built. Let's get the parts factory pri prioritized. Now the workers have like a set of orders and sometimes when you prioritize they've got to finish the first set of orders now you notice the we've got a power problem or well, we can turn off the kiln that should fix the power and um, let's get another farm up and running Priority on the worker factory. Let's get that time 16. So this is kind of the basics basics of it. I'm just getting to this part because I need to just kind of explain this first part because this is where you'll get most problems in the game when your foundation of your base is not <laughs> optimum. Finally, I can build additional workers now. I will appreciate the extra hands, but I wonder, do I really need them? They will boost my functionality greatly. Having more workers will expand my physical domain over this planet. Now, there's going to be certain things that happen, like the temperature just rises and it can cause fires, and it can cause fires in large areas like this. Now, it's asking me to build a maintenance facility, but I really want a worker coming out. I need, I want two workers out. So, get the power out. Come on, little man! This is kind of the slow pace at the beginning, and... Um, I'd recommend you save it, because certain stuff in the storyline might happen, and you might think, um, I'm set up a bit wrong, I'll come back to the beginning of the cell. The worker factories will be so helpful. The workers will take care of the manual operations, while I focus on developing the life support systems. Soon, I will welcome the first colonists. Their arrival has created so many expectations in my mind. There will be so many paths to take from here on. But there's something else as well. Some kind of feeling created from those expectations. What is it? I am anxious, but can I truly feel anxiety? I anticipate the first worker. Technically, the I, I. 
Now the storyline is gripping. I loved it. I love listening to the reflections. It really adds up. I'm just time 16 in it here because I'm just getting get these maintenance workers out. I want three workers basically. So, but you can see when you've got two, it starts to um, really open up your possibilities of getting everything going. So I've like settled quite well now. Now, the maintenance facility, it's like, right, if I put one in the middle here, it's going to service everything. Is that correct? No, it's not. These things are like fire stations, and it's going to give you um, a set of drones that will put fires out. But it cannot manage this area here if I've densely packed in my buildings like I have here. So, I'm going to set up like a quadrant, and I guarantee you this will save a nightmare later on in the game. Uh, put it up there then. <laughs> because the more dense your buildings are, the more fire stations you need. And it will get, well, you will get fires happening normally. Now, things at the bottom will tell you what's happening, like glass is on the down. We're using glass, we're using parts, these are on the down. Well, glass, I need to I can turn that on. Maybe I need to build another parts thing, but I know where parts are going, but this can give you an idea of what's, what's kind of been getting used in your thing. Right, let's prioritize this one soon as they're going down. It, it is it is gonna need something else, which is the pink stuff. So yeah, as you're designing, it gets really good and you'll get to a stage where you're gonna be thinking about your next stage to build your next place. And um, as you do research, you will get more buildings. You, you're going to advance across Mars. It's going to be great. Storyline is going to be playing through as you do everything. It will be really wonderful experience. Now, I'm actually going to load into one of my later games and you'll see how much I've done. And that way I can show you the tech tree and all that good stuff. Because once you get your base basically built, it will then show you the planetary kind of analysis, like how much oxygen's there, CO2, and you were gonna need to terraform Mars, and that will be incredible. So let's quit out of this. Let's load it up, baby. Is on a fast SSD and M2 drive. When you've got your buildings across the whole planet, it can take a while to load in. No surprising. <laughs> yeah, not surprising. Now there is a key technology, and the learning um, arc in this game gets deep when the research comes because I don't feel like it gives you enough information but there's one key technology you need and it will make sure you have a fantastic game because oh my god it was a real headache trying to work out this thing so yeah it, it can get that bad <laughs> Let's put it on one speed. Now, the, the base I was building was like this section here. You can see I've upgraded roads and things are moving quite fast. You can see a bit of greenery on Mars now. And a lot of my buildings, you can see my steel building here is level three. That's been completely upgraded. You notice here my Hyperloop. Your workers go on the hyperloop and they will go and find something. So let's say this whole area here is ran out of a resource. Well, the worker will go on the hyperloop to the place where the resource is. And I've got huge network across the planet. A lot of these are going to specific high rich resources that are around. 
Right, let's have a look at research then. Now notice you've got military, terraforming abilities now, colonization, humans coming here. Different power choices now, including batteries, massively needed. Factories level 1, 2 and 3, mines 1, 2 and 3, including uranium. And you can build spaceports and you get missions to do outside of the planet too. If I, come, if I zoom out here, you'll see there's a lot of missions going on here. And a lot of them that I've done. It is really cool. And you can see here, I've got actual um, rockets coming from Earth to Mars to uh, do research here. So you can see all this water here. And this is a, this is speed one, and you can the, you can see how fast they move on the hyperloop, and you can see what materials they're moving between each site as well. Now, if I select up here the scanner, you can kind of see why I've got certain things built. Well, this section here has a huge amount of aluminium and they've all input that basically mined this out. The whole of my infrastructure has burned this out. So I now need to go and find some more. There's some on the ice cap here, but I can't get into that anymore. That has been destroyed on the planet, effectively. And um, so you need to go and find your next source of the material and get a hyperloop there and make sure you can connect up your huge factory because it's all relying on it. You notice here it's gone dark and the stored energy will start to zoom down and all that stuff. You do get weather as well and up here on the top left you can see how hot it is. It's actually beautiful. I'm almost at the end of the game here. And you can see the pressure in the planet now. We are trapping lots of CO2 in places. And uh, we've almost got a 24% mix of O2, which is the what we've got here on Earth, just around 24%. And uh, I need to get CO2 up. CO, CO2 is like the... the uh, we need a bit of that to make it kind of Earth quality. Now, on the research here, um, you can see the population on the planet and the speed of research when it comes in. That's all totally cool. Let's go to the research. All right, here's the tech tree. <laughs> the tech tree, then. We'll start off on engineering. Wind farms are going to need it to survive the night. Storage. Sorry, battery is going to need it to really cover your bases. So those two are going to be primarily. And the Hyperloop here, phenomenal. You are 100% necessary to get the Hyperloop. It's so good. Now, it's going to be obvious to research some things because of the mission you're on. But I would frankly ignore the mission and get on with building because often... More often than not, when the next mission comes, you're going to be sat there with your pants down, your base isn't fully complete, and you're on time for the next mission, and you're like, oh. so, um, yeah, you want to get on that stuff. When it comes to space itself, um, the, these ones at the bottom, for example, are going to increase how many space boards you have. That's probably going to be its most important one you do here. But the other ones are going to be missions that you're going to be doing out in space based on terraforming. Biotech's going to be very good also f f to increase your buildings for people to live here. And you can um, you can eventually get the open city, which um, is going to produce a lot of research, but it can hold 1,000 people, which is phenomenal. really is good. Eventually you can get bioengineered animals on the planet and all that juicy stuff and um i won't go into military too much but there is going to be some 
combat on the in the game. I'm not going to spoil that, but um, you're not the only human setting trying to set up on Mars. I'll say that much. So yeah, I'll, I'll look in and have a quick look at it. <laughs> uh, there you go. Pause the video. I'm going to skip out of that one. Military is pretty self-explanatory. What you do in there. But essentially, you're going to get to a place where you you need as many research sites as possible to crank out research fast. Now, these Hyperloops are effectively train stations. You just need to build one to the other. If I try and build another one, you can kind of see how it's going to connect. Let's go to a place I've not connected to. Now, if you're out in the middle of nowhere here, you're going to have to build another Hyperloop to connect to it. So you're better off daisy chaining as much as possible. That'd be a fantastic site there. And there's a lot of ore over here. So sticking it there might be able to get all these mine here. So that could be a good mining position. This is the kind of things you want to do. Because the Hyperloop will be able to get this ore back to your main base as quick as possible. That's effectively what you've got to do. And you'll notice in your home base. Spaceports that are going to need a lot of material. And um, you're eventually going to have things like... A space elevator. That's not my home base. It's fairly small. Here it is. Oh, look at these massive cities on Mars. Can you, out of an EVIT, there's my space elevator. Absolutely phenomenal. And I've upgraded roads so that moving between factories is so much faster from the Hyperloop or the Space Elevator. And um, you really want to do roads going between your factories and places where materials are coming in. So parts factory needs to be roaded to your Hyperloop, really, because it's going to be moving, you know, they're going to be pushing materials to these places. Um, new things on the bottom before I, I, I finish up then. I've, you can see here food, and I never have a chance to store food. <laughs> because when the humans come, they're always just eating it all. I hardly, I'm hardly. i almost building it on demand, which seems okay for me. I do have lots of chemicals coming in, so potentially... I could I could put more factories down if I want to make, want to store more food up, but at the minute, um, population wise, uh, it's, it's not too bad. Not too bad. I'm getting like a massive amount of new arrivals coming in. 133,000 people coming from Earth, so uh, I don't even have population for them to stay at. What's going on? Yeah, they'll be going. <laughs> they'll be going living out in the research areas like this one here. And you'll feel so satisfying when you've connected everything up and you've got these Hyperloop train stations quickly ferrying things around. It's wonderful. And even coming back to this game after months of having no computer, I remember now exactly why I built here and why I connected stuff up. And it's, it's a really epic game. In its, in its journey that you're going to be creating this mass, look at this massive economy here just to get out to places. What I'll say is this is storyline based. There'll be certain times in the story it asks you to build a research space somewhere and it's like, no world we have built! Like this one up here! And um, and even when I've, I've not got anything, I still hyperloops it up because, hey, 
You want to build that fast, you want to get in Hyperloop, because if they're running bits back from here all the way across the desert, it's so slow. So get the Hyperloops up to the up to your construction point, because you get, you'll get the construction materials that much faster. Uh, what? He's not Hyperloop to... Something may have been destroyed because of weather or something like that. <laughs> I don't really got that. Anyway, you're going to have a fantastic, satisfying experience constructing and terraforming Mars. And um, the ice cap, all the water now, the green zones, deep forests that are growing here, animals on the planet now. It's really, really good, and we're going to be getting a you know a hundred thousand people coming to the planet just to live here. So it's becoming fully terraformed and habitable, and that's what's so satisfying. You did it. You really did master the planet of Mars, running the AI. I'll say one thing though. I really look forward to anything else they do. If they go to, for example, Jupiter, and you're starting to create, terraform the moons out there, that should be fascinating. If you jump to each moon, you're getting new materials to research, new technologies to come in. As you go around that area, it sounds phenomenal because how you build up, go through the tech tree, find new things, research that, get new stuff, it's fantastic. It's basically a city builder on steroids that you're constructing across a planet. And with the Hyperloops working effectively as train stations, it gives you that fascinating um, design that you may have got with Railroad Tycoon, where you're looking for the next opportunity to profit from on the map and really feed into the network. You'll notice here on the map, silicon is very, very low coming in. And it would, you know, your next step would be look, surveying and finding where there's a lot of silicon. So a lot of this at the bottom is gonna feed into your planet planning. Whoa, there's a lot of uranium there and there is some heat. You get a lot of energy from these heat zones. All right. So, in short, you start off extremely small. And you will, in a matter of days, you will be blossoming out across the planet and you'll start to see terraformation. It's going to be great. When you research new technology, it gives you new things to play with and really crank out more research. And once again, when it tells you up here that you need to get like so much oxygen, ignore it. Get your infrastructures built and all build up so that you're absolutely super strong because this will come in normally. What you're doing here will slowly terraform the planet. Do not rush the missions. That's what I can guarantee because what will, if you rush the missions, you'll get to the final mission and you've got too much oxygen on the planet and you'll die. Effectively, the more oxygen you have on the planet, the more heat you get on your planet and it will, t all your buildings will set on fire, <laughs> effectively. And it'll be, you'll be dead. You'll be going, oh, why would you die? It's because you rushed the missions. Just don't prioritize them. <laughs> prioritize your city building that's and have fun with that and just be conscious of it happening up there but if there's anything f is it f8 for research f9 f9 there we go make sure a hundred percent you've got your batteries up there to survive the night and you get the hyperloop up because when you have two connected buildings on Mars. Sorry, when you've got two stations on Mars not connected, they are not going to survive. They 100% need the Hyperloop to connect them and it joins them together. 
So there we go. This is Per Asper, an absolutely wonderful city builder on steroids going across a whole planet where you've got little worker AI bots running around for you and humans coming from Earth to do research for you. It is mwah, fantastic. And um, definitely one of the highlights of 2020. And I honestly, if you love city builders, you are going to relish and love the experience that I had here. Honestly, it, it's so incredible and um, really can't wait to see what, what the team does next. But yeah, fantastic engine. Everything makes sense. When stuff is going wrong, you can find out why. And, um, and yeah, you can really get very nerdy with all the science because a lot of the stuff you're doing has come from what NASA feel is the best way to terraform Mars. So you're going to be kind of up there with the science tech. So yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Well, I thank you so much for watching. Please um, leave a comment about the video if you've got any interest here, any questions you might have about the game. And um, please give a thumbs up so the awareness of the video gets out there. Um, I will be coming back next week. I'll be doing a video of one of my games from E3 2020, which will be Sisters, the Seven Anchorites. You want to check that out next week. But um, with, that, with, that, with that said, thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Lipstick Paddy. You've been watching PC Gaming Radio, and I'm so glad that you tuned in and hope you had a good time watching. So, you, yeah, you take care, stay safe, and bye-bye for now. Well, thanks for watching. And if you remember, you can please subscribe and like the video. And don't remember, you can also hit the bell for notices on the channel. Yeah, we've also got a Twitter you can see on our banner, so check that out too. So take care and bye-bye.